Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, Chevy couldn't make it this weekend, so um, this video will be on my own. Uh, the plan was to do the video about the virtual machines and the pass-through of Unraid. Yeah, so we have two gaming systems in basically one machine. Um, that video is moved to next week and in this week's video I'm going to show you what we've done so far with Unraid. So Unraid was the project we planned after the Open Media Fold setup. Uh, but we mixed it around a little and we decided to do Unraid well, first. Yeah, as you can see in the background, this is still the same running Unraid server as, uh, as in the first video, as part one. In this video, I'm going to show you what we upgraded so far and what changes we made. So let's start with the storage capacity. At first, we started with the 250 gigabyte hard drive, but soon realized that it wasn't going to be enough for the Unraid build and we wanted to test it properly. So um, we decided to move the disk from the HP Gen 8 microserver over to this Unraid build. And those are the drives you see in the background. We have one parity disk and we have three member disks here. And um, the parity disk is of course the biggest disk. It's the three terabyte uh, red disk. Uh, member disk are three terabyte, two terabyte and two terabyte. So we have an effective, well available storage of seven terabyte. Yeah, a seven terabyte is going to be enough. Well, for me. So we have one disk for, well, basically rebuilding if one other drive fails. And uh, that's you know, the only protection we have with this setup. So if two disks fail, yeah, then uh, I'm out of luck and I only have the data that's left on the disk that didn't fail. That, that's basically what this is. Um, the fun thing with this is you can expand it with another parity drive and a whole lot more hard drives. Uh, we can expand this array with a caching SSD and I had a caching SSD installed. It was just a simple Corsair old 64 gigabyte SSD. Unraid thought this SSD was already dead. Um, it didn't have any errors, but the years of service it went through, yeah. Okay, uh, that SSD was 64 gigabytes, so this is not even going to do anything. So, uh, last minute edit. Um, I just wanted to show you the, uh, the difference between writing to an array, which is equipped with a caching SSD, and writing to this array without a caching SSD. And I'm not that impressed with the speed without the caching SSD. So um, I have a couple of files from actually this video that we're going to copy over uh, to this share without the caching SSD. So let's get these videos and let's paste them on the server. And you can see it starts writing with, well, 80, 84, 85. After a while, the speed goes down to, well, almost 20 megabytes a second. And that's because we're writing to the array directly um, and we can improve this by adding a caching SSD. So I just picked up this one. It's a 240 gigabyte King Fast. And we're going to install this as a caching SSD so you can see the difference. And let's see how the transfer speeds are afterwards. So, okay, the Unraid server is booted and we're prompted with the array settings. And if we scroll down, we can see cache devices. And here we can select the King Fast SSD and we can use that as a caching SSD. So we're going to select that one and we're going to start the array. It will take some time, yes. Yeah, and we're good. So unmountable, unsupported partition layout. It doesn't even have a partition yet. Uh, let's see. Ah, okay. So format will create a file system in all unmountable disks. Yeah, and that's the SSD, basically the Kingfast SSD. So we're going to do that, uh, cache Kingfast. So we need to format it. It will create a better FS file system. Yes, formatting. Unraid cache smart is message. Well, green is good. As you can see, I have enabled the notifications on my Unraid server as well. So now we have a caching SSD. If we go to shares, and we go, for example, to data, which will be the main share of this server, we can select the caching SSD to use with the share data. So it's uh, enabled by default. It's on yes, so we don't have to enable it. If it isn't enabled, you can enable it here. Um, then if we go back to the main window and we scroll down and we go to schedule, then we have the mover settings. And here we can um, tell the Unraid server um, 
on which specific times it needs to transfer the data that's on the caching SSD to the array. I've set this to hourly, so uh, we're done with that. And now let's start transferring the same files again. So that were these videos. And we're going to copy them to the temp recordings. Speeds are the same as before, and we can see it starts filling up. So that's good. Let's see what the speeds are, still going strong. Um, another thing to note with a caching SSD, uh, if you put the mover well, on a schedule that's a moving data once a week and your caching SSD fails and it hasn't transferred the data yet to the array, you lost practically all the data that was on the SSD. So that's something to note there. And the speed is going up as well. Okay, so good speeds. And in about an hour, it will transfer the data that's on this SSD to the array and yeah, we can start over. So if you want to transfer big files, let's say 250 or 260 gigabytes, this is not going to work. And I had that with that 64 gigabyte caching SSD. Uh, when I started to move data back to the array, um, it told me uh, that insufficient disk space. And uh, well, that's basically because the SSD was yeah, practically full. We can see on the background, uh, 10 gigabyte almost. So yeah, that's the part of the caching SSD. Let's move on with the video. Another thing I had a problem with in the part one video was the data traveler, uh, the flash drive. Um, I mentioned it was a USB 3.0. You can see it's a 2.0, sorry about that. But the problem I had with it was that it, it showed up as a public network share. So I, I had write access to this, um, yeah, to this USB stick and it contains our system files. So that wasn't a good idea. What I didn't notice was that there was an exclamation mark uh, right before this. So what I had to do was just uh, go to this flash drive and just disable the network share. Um, I also gave booby trap no access to this USB stick. No need to and no, well, now it's gone. And I only have the shares now that I created on this um, Unraid build. Uh, as you can see, we have three SSDs now. Um, initially, there were only two SSDs, but you can see we have unassigned devices, and this is a plugin you can install. And with this plugin, you can mount hard drives or SSDs that are no member of the current array. So you can use them. In my case, as you can see, the Transcend SSD on the background is used as a data store for my virtual machines. And the Western Digital 240 gigabyte SSD. Well, this one is used for a virtual machine, and this is one of the two virtual machines we're going to need for the uh, yeah for the for the gaming pass through build, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's that one. Not going to mount it. So no need for that. Yeah. Um, well, then we have our parity. The the parity check took quite some time. Um, I believe six or seven hours to complete. I could write data to it, but. Unraid suggests let it finish. So I did and the next day I started to move my data over because these are the only hard drives I have. So the data that was on this was also on the backup server and the backup server on a offsite location. So I wasn't too afraid to lose my data, but I need the data for my daily operations. So moved all the data back to it and you can see I have 1.7 terabyte of data in use and I have 5.3 terabytes left. Yeah, plenty enough space for me. Then if we have a look on the shares, you can see I've added a couple more shares. I add the web share. This is for my web server and I'm still working on that. I have my music collection and all the other stuff. Yeah, nothing more to say about shares. Just added a couple of them and um, yeah, that, that's working all right. And if we go to users, still only two users. I have the root user and the booby trap. Settings, well, nothing changed here. Well, except the fact we have unassigned devices now uh, shown here with a couple of options. Um, plugins, uh, these are the plugins we installed. Um, in the part one video, we installed the community applications. You saw that in the video. And we installed unassigned devices after the video because I wanted to play with this. And that's the plugin I just told you about. Um, really nice plugin. And through the community applications, there is way more to install and, and to discover. So we'll definitely cover that in, uh, in another video as well. And as we can see, we have an update for unassigned devices. Okay, we'll do that later. Um, then we go to Docker, and as you can see, I have a couple of Docker containers running at the moment. Um, the first one is Plex, um, covered that in the part one video, um, did the final configuration. 
for some reason after a reboot I got my uh, language settings back. I missed that in the part one video, but I can change the language now. So that's working all right. Then we have Xioma, and I mentioned this in the Asrock motherboard slash NAS status update video that I wanted to use Xioma for the surveillance cam. And I have installed this, but I haven't configured it yet. So that's still on the to-do list. The TeamSpeak server, of course, for my friends, and that's working fine. So. That's really nice. And let's encrypt. And this is really cool, this plugin. Um, it installs uh, not only the NGINX web server. I think Unraid itself is running on NGINX as well. Um, but it installs uh, let's encrypt uh, as well for the SSL certificate. So that's really nice. It's, it renews itself after three months, if I'm correct. So um, we have to see how that, uh, how that goes. But this, is, uh, this will be my web server for the websites. So then we have the VMs and as you can see, I have a couple of VMs already installed. Um, the first one is the gaming VM, hashtag one. Now I guess we can have a look at this VM. You wouldn't mind probably. Let's go to edit. Uh, you can see I gave it four cores. We think that should be enough for a normal gaming system. 12 gigabytes of RAM. But if we have a look here, primary V disk location, you can see I set it to dev disk by ID, ETA, and then blah, 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 this SSD. That's the 240 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Rewrite the data on a SATA bus. It will be written raw to the SSD as if it were uh, SSD in your PC. So the funny thing with this was that when I was done configuring this first VM and well, I gave it a go, installing the drivers, the updates, and all that kind of stuff. and I wanted to power down the Unraid server for disconnecting the, the caching SSD. Uh, when I fired it up, it was actually trying to boot Windows from that SSD. So I went to the BIOS, changed the, the boot settings to the USB stick on a primary device. And yeah, we were good again, but yeah, that, that, was, that was a thing. Uh, the graphics card, as you can see, pass through 1080. Uh, we'll get into details about this virtual machine in the next video. But uh, this is basically the, the first VM. And then we have my Ubuntu server and I use this Ubuntu server well at the moment only for a um, Technic uh, server of Minecraft so um, that's the only thing it does now it has webmin installed and um, and the Minecraft server and the Minecraft server is pretty heavy but yeah it runs fine and as I mentioned before we have our Vega build the plus side of this VM is uh, I just connect through VPN to my network at home and I have a virtual machine um, only all of the time and yeah that's why this Vega VM is still here so yeah that's basically what these VMs are about we have the apps of course we get to the community applications you can install way more applications and docker images with this um, really nice we're going to have a look on this in the future as well for other plugins and ideas well like this unify controller for example that could be interesting. And that's basically what we did so far. So um, everything is running. As I mentioned before, um, at the moment, we only have four disks uh, with one parity drive. We could expand this uh, some more. So for now, I'm really glad we chose the Leon Lee case for this project because we can house 12 hard drives in this case. Uh, really nice. And the three SSDs will be used for the, for the next video. But I will use this build for now as my main build, um, just to get the hang of it. The HP Gen 8 server is, well, you can see it in the video now, um, pretty empty, no disk left uh, in that server. Uh, we will use that server for the Open Media Vault project. So that server will not be forgotten. Um, we'll just yeah fix some hard drives for that server. And that project could exist alongside uh, Unraid. Yeah, why not? As for the performance of this Unraid build, the 2700X in this case performs really well. Uh, we will show you that in the next video. Well, we have to see how the 2700X holds up uh, when we start both VMs and um, two GTX 1080 pass-throughs and both will be running games at the same time. Yeah, that will be really interesting. As I mentioned before, we will get with Open Media Vault after we're done with the, the VM project of Unraid. Um, then I will have my graphics cards back. Then we will start with the Gen 8 micro server, um, install Open Media Vault on that, and we will run both projects well next to each other alongside. So yeah, 
with this being said, I'm going to leave the video at this. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, you can leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.